what we're doing um, is on our digital marketplaces, we are every week, we're spending time in, in trying to convert people operating in the informal market, which is operating 100% offline, uh, bring them in for a meeting and explain to them how they can benefit uh, of being uh, online. Um, and, and we have a lot of success cases where individuals have operated uh, in the informal market. We've helped them uh, to, to structure and actually set up a, a business, uh, start for them to, to, to grow their business, register their business to start to pay taxes, um, uh, start to actually hire people, um, uh, set up an office. Um, and, and so I think it, it, it's very much an effort of the private sector, as well as the local governments in a joint effort uh, to, to help bridge uh, this gap that we have, because the digital inclusion is absolutely crucial. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Africa Tech Talks. Today, we have a very special guest with us. Uh, his name is Kenneth. Um, Kenneth is a Danish-born Danish entrepreneur who has made significant strides in Angola's business landscape. Initially embarking on a career in real estate, he worked for EDC, Denmark's premier real estate company, and engaged in international property projects in Greece and Portugal. In 2011, driven by personal passion, uh, Kenneth, he relocated to Angola, starting a new chapter of his life with his Angolan wife and embarking on an entrepreneurial path. By 2015, his venture, Tech Africa, gained distinction as Angola's first venture capital-backed tech company. Tech Africa is renowned for creating digital marketplaces, boasting a portfolio that includes Angola's leading property and automotive portals, Angokaza and Angokarro.com. Kenneth. Uh, a pleasure to have us on our uh, humble uh, podcast episode. Uh, thank you so much. Um, and uh, I will start right away with uh, our first question for you, which is about transition and impact. So, Kenneth, please tell us a little bit more about your journey from Denmark to Angola and how your experiences in the European property market uh, influenced your approach to entrepreneurship and the development of digital marketplaces in Africa. Okay. So thank you so much for, for the invitation. So yeah, so a little bit about my background. As you mentioned, I'm, I'm originally from, from Denmark. Um, and on a holiday in Brazil in 2009, I bumped into a lovely uh, young lady uh, that just happened to be Angolan. Uh, Fast forward uh, a couple of years, we decided to move together. So I moved from Denmark uh, to Angola um, without much of a plan. Uh, I had a background in real estate in Denmark um, and I came here a bit naive without knowing the language, without having really, uh, again, much of a plan. Uh, so real estate and, and marketing, uh, I sort of had to create my my own job. Um, I started out by setting up a small digital agency where we created uh, small and medium, uh, basic websites, graphic work for small and medium sized uh, businesses um, and that we, we scaled up to, to a certain point. Um, and uh, at the same time, uh, I really like the, uh, the digital marketplace business model. So I've seen it and I've used it uh, in the past in Europe. Um, so there weren't really uh, many of its kind in, in, in Angola. So we launched the, uh, the property portal and the automotive portal, portal uh, very much like MVPs, very basic websites. Um, but because of the lack of of, uh, uh, of competition and people starting uh, sh to see uh, the benefits of using such a portal, we actually managed to get some uh, some traction. 
and uh, and 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 ultimately managed to create a, a real business, which which then ultimately uh, became uh, Tech Africa, the uh, the company that I'm I'm the founder of today, and which is today uh, the the leading uh, company uh, having the leading portfolio of uh, digital marketplaces uh, in Angola. And uh, and last year we also launched in uh, in Mozambique with a property portal uh, in in Mozambique. Interesting. Uh, were there any uh, cultural aspects um, that you didn't account for during this transition? Uh, well, I suppose what one of one of the challenges right off the bat is, of course, uh, the language barrier. Um, and then uh, whenever you come from having a, uh, a hobby project and into actually creating a, a setting of a real business, it used to be very difficult in Angola. So number one, uh, if you are a single founder, um, as me, being a, a foreigner, uh, the foreign investment law was, was complicated. So you, you needed a, a local partner, which I did not have. Uh, secondly, uh, we received investments back in 2015, um, and the investment that we received was below the, uh, the the limit that was set before. Before uh, foreign investments had to be uh, of minimum half a million US dollars, and, and the uh, amount that we were receiving was below that. So ultimately, that meant that we set up. The company, the uh, the legal entity in, in Singapore, um, and uh, so so there were quite a few hurdles. The, the good news is that uh, Angola has improved in those areas. So today mm -hmm. it's it's uh, much much easier uh, to set up a, a company, and, and there's no longer you know this this minimal uh, value of, of investment. And so so we're we're definitely on on the right track. Just uh, Andre, let me. Uh, sure. You talked. Uh, you talked about uh, the importance of digital inclusion, right? Uh, but someone could argue that um, sometimes uh, digital inclusion can leave people behind, so to speak. So, uh, how do we? How do you see this this potential problem, which is why? How do you bring people to the new age, to the new digital uh, economy, but you don't widen, you know, the socioeconomic, uh, you know, gaps? Um, because that that happens. You, you start to put uh, out there products and services, and you start demanding a, a series of, of you know um, requirements from from people, even devices, uh, smartphones, or uh, national identification, and uh, sometimes. Uh, not all those people you can uh, bring at uh, a very first uh, phase, and that could lead to a uh, potential widening of the, the uh, socio-economical gap. How do you see how do you see that uh, potential problem? No, you you bring up a, a very valid point there. Uh, it, it is a real problem uh, because it, it is it is very difficult at scale. Um, to, to bridge that gap, um, and yet it, it is very important to to do so. Uh, on a small scale, what we're doing um, is on our digital marketplaces. We are every week we're spending time in, in trying to convert people operating in the informal market, which is operating 100% offline, uh, bring them in for a meeting and explain to them how they can benefit uh, of being uh, online um, and, and we have a lot of success cases where individuals have operated uh, in the informal market we've helped them uh, to, to structure and actually set up a, a business uh, start for them to to grow their business register their business to start to pay taxes um, uh, start to actually hire people, um, uh, set up an office. Um, and, and so I think it, it, it's very much an effort of the private sector, as well as the local governments in a joint effort uh, to, to help 
bridge uh, this gap that we have because the digital inclusion is absolutely crucial. In ideal worlds, uh, we, we need to, uh, you know, get these digital skill sets on school agenda. So uh, every school in Africa, in Angola, uh, it, it, it needs to be uh, a, a, a very, there needs to be a great focus on teaching the youngsters, uh, you know, the tools, the skill sets, so they're prepared to be part of, of, of this digital economy. Uh, the issue is to do that at, at scale. First of all, you need teachers that currently don't, they don't have the background, they don't have the knowledge to actually teach about it. Um, you could scale it by doing e-learning, but the problem is then you need to put in computers in all the uh, class in all the classrooms. And we're talking about many classrooms that don't even have electricity. Um, so uh, it's it's a very complex uh, problem, but it's it's a very important problem uh, to to solve. And I do think in in partnership with the private sector uh, and the local government, it it is it is possible uh, to uh, over time uh, to solve it. Um, mm -hmm. And it's it's just very important. So, uh, but I'm optimistic we'll, we'll, we'll manage to do so eventually. Uh, on that topic, um, and uh, talking about the tech landscape that we have in Africa uh, these days, um, how do you see the urbanization um, impacting the entrepreneurship in Africa? And uh, in, in which ways do you think that the increasing tech talent pool has been harnessed to, or is being, or is going to be harnessed to drive innovation and um, create economic growth. Right. No, absolutely. I mean, uh, Africa has the fastest growing urban, urban population uh, in the world. Um, yeah. At, at the, the moment, I believe the, uh, the population in Africa is 1.4 uh, billion right. people, um, and it's expected to double uh, between now and, and uh, 2050. 2050. Um, and the tendency is clear. Uh, the people are moving to, to the greater cities and the urbanization is growing dramatically. So that creates a lot of challenges. Uh, but within these challenges, also a, a lot of opportunities uh, for businesses to, to, uh, to solve those problems and, and challenges. Um, so some of the, uh, the challenges includes uh, infrastructure and, and transport mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the uh the health sector uh the housing demand and the quality and, and, and cost of housing uh, energy water uh, sanitation and and, and waste uh, sanitation and waste is, is is a big one in, in in a country like angola where we're still battling with a uh, disease like um like malaria, malaria on a global scale has increased, thankfully, many, many years yet. Angola, we, uh, we, we cannot uh, seem to, to lower the, the numbers of, of cases of, of malaria. Um, and it, there's a, a close tie between, you know, sanitation and waste uh, and, and malaria, the outburst of, mm -hmm. of malaria. So those, those are all things that we, we, we need to, to tackle. Um, and within there, there, there lies a, a great opportunity uh, for future entrepreneurs and current entrepreneurs. Um, and as as youngsters tend to live in these bigger cities, uh, so when we're talking about the urbanized areas, that's also where you have typically the best internet connectivity. So it also allows mm -hmm. the youngsters uh, to gain the knowledge and, and build. And, and take part in the digital uh, economy mm -hmm. in, a, in, mm -hmm. a, in a greater sense than it is in the uh, in the uh, outskirts of, of of the country. Yeah, you create a space to entrepreneurship also probably uh, when you don't have um, house numbers uh, in in many places yet. So we we may have space for. Uh, entrepreneurship to organize the this new urbanization and and probably it's it's a way to go um 
changing the topic a little bit uh, and talking about a more um, w- one of your sides where you you were a mentor and uh, you try to to grow personally and to develop other people. Uh, can you speak about your role as a mentor and the personal insights you've gained from navigating the cultural differences in businesses practices between Europe and Africa? Sure. Um, so I've I've worked and been part of the uh, the Founder Institute, which is uh, one of the world's leading uh, early stage accelerator programs, uh, which also opened in in, in Luanda in, in Angola. Uh, some years ago, um, the role of 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 a mentor uh, and sort of the challenges I see, um, whether it's in Africa or Europe, the rest of the world, uh, one of the the main advices and challenges I see in in entrepreneurs trying to help them and and is 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 very much to at first um, have a clear vision and validating uh, the idea um so number one trying to figure out this idea this website this app uh product whatever is it solving a problem um i see many entrepreneurs sort of skipping that or at least not figuring out okay is the problem big enough is there someone already solving the problem? Uh, and if so, am I solving the problem better than them? And then are you solving the problem in, in such a good way that people actually want to pay for it and pay for it at scale so it can turn into to a business? Uh, that, that tends to be uh, the, uh, the, 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 the thing that we, we, we continue to dig into and where, uh, which is just crucial in the initial stage to uh, validate a and start up a concept, a startup idea. Um, in terms of of, of differences uh, between uh, Europe and Africa, I mean, there's quite a few uh, differences. Um, I would say uh, communication style. Uh, in, in Europe, uh, we tend to, to communicate uh, very direct, um, uh, whereas the African business culture is, tends to be more indirect and um, it, it's, it, it's, you sort of have to warm up to, uh, to, to actually bring through the, the, the message 100%. Uh, so that's something that uh, I had to learn and, 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 and navigate. Um, uh, I think also there's something to be said in terms of being on time, being punctual. Um, so when you have a meeting at, at 10 uh, in Denmark, it's, it's a 10, it's not five minutes past. Um, and uh, there's quite a few situations where uh, it, it's a little bit different uh, in operating in, in, in some African markets, uh, including Angola. Uh, so uh, I think it's it's important to uh, to understand that and and uh, to adjust uh, accordingly. Uh, so I think certainly you can sort of help and 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 um, explain where you're coming from, but you also have to be humble and understand uh, that you are navigating in a new culture and you have to then uh, adjust uh, accordingly. Kenneth, uh, tell me something. Uh, we were discussing just a few moments ago um, uh, the the mentorship uh, the mentorship model, um, and I mean, of course, these these types. Uh, some people might 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 ask these type of programs. Of course, they are very valuable. Um, but what do you think about the the, the scalability or sustainability of these mentorship programs or accelerators because you mentioned sometimes we we gotta you know challenge the ideas that come to the table right Ch- challenge the ideas of the, the founders of the innovators uh sometimes you're not solving a real problem or the problem is there but it's not big enough to, to 
to be a like a, a startup, so to speak. Could be a small business or a micro business, but it's not scalable enough to to be a to be a startup, at least in in some specific contexts. So, how how do you think these kind of programs? I think in Angola we already have incubators, accelerators. We don't have. I think we don't have still venture studios. But the most common ones are incubators and accelerators. Then you have mentorship programs. Uh, in which sense, in what sense, you think this could uh, not ju just sometimes generate just a temporary buzz around it, but how should they contribute to a more long-term tangible results? You see, uh, sometimes what do you think might be uh, some points that could be improved uh, for 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 the Angolan context, for for instance, right now. Right. Um, so I think there's I think there's quite a few elements to that. Uh, one thing you can argue is, of course, um, the quality of the startups, as you mentioned, and I also talked about. Uh, are you solving a real problem? Is 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 there actually something of enough substance that you and and then do you have the right team around it? Is there the potential? Is the foundation to actually build a proper business? Uh, if 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 that's a yes, uh, well then you're facing still that you are trying to scale that good idea with a good team within a, a digital economy which is still tiny. We're talking about again third of the population that actually has access to the internet um and then also how can you scale it on a revenue perspective it's only in recent years we've seen uh digital payment solutions uh starting to mature in, in the country um but so say that so th those are real challenges um and then i think many cases it's you can also only bootstrap up to a certain point for you to take it to the next level you then need capital you need then investment to to fully scale it um and and that's another challenge in in, in angola so uh, overall we've seen uh increase of venture capital coming into africans tech e ecosystem in, in in recent years um but the majority of, of, of the funding uh, hasn't been given to, to Angola, in, in fact, very little. Uh, it's, it's Kenya, uh, Nigeria, Egypt, South Africa, which are the big four that have received, I believe, more than 80% of, of the total funding into the ecosystem in Africa. So uh, in, in, in Why Angola... Do you think, sorry, Kenneth, to interrupt. Why do you think that that happens? some of our viewers might ask why why are those the most common you know destinations of of capital and not the other i don't know 50 countries in in africa uh, what do you what do you think are the i don't know the two main contributors to that right so uh, one is the language barrier so a, a lot of of, mm -hmm. of the funding uh the vc funding that has been given in in africa has not been from Portuguese speaking uh, VCs or, or angel investors. Majority of them are English speakers. Mm -hmm. uh, so that that's that's one thing. Uh, another thing is just a, the maturity of of the of the ecosystem in Angola. So overall, it's early days in the African ecosystem, but the four markets that are receiving the majority of of the funding, well, those markets are also much more uh, mature. Um, what they also have in common, they they are larger markets. So what a VC looks at as well is the scalability. Um, so those they all have bigger market sizes than say a country like like Angola. Um, yet in Angola, what we have to do as the local players is that we need to validate. We need to position ourselves strong and have a strong business case uh, in Angola. And then we need to be, be able to present uh, the potential of being a regional player. So, uh, so we're not only, we don't, as a founder, your objective is not only to dominate Angola, but for the region. And then we also can compare market size 
with these uh, these startup nations that are receiving a lot more of, of, of the funding. Uh, so I believe those and uh, are some of the and, and again, so a digital um, internet penetration is also uh, at a more advanced stage in those countries. Um, but again, in Angola, we're, we're making progress uh, in all these areas and we are seeing funding, but many of the programs, uh, accelerator, mentor programs, you know, guidance and help can only take you this far. Uh, there needs to be a, a bit of a, a push, a financial push in many cases to, to take things uh, to the next level, which was very much the case of, of us in, in, uh, in Tech Africa. We, we sort of we validated, we had a proof of concept, uh, but then the investment helped us to build a strong product and, and then scale it uh, to the next level. Mm -hmm. Uh, I Very well. I'm think I'm thinking also. Um, don't don't you think that uh, Angola or um, smaller countries that have this uh, development, like you like you mentioned earlier, uh, don't you think that it's a good playground or at least a test ground for uh, for ideas in the African continent? Because somehow it's a smaller uh, test ground, right? And and you've been doing that actually. Yes, absolutely. Um, because the, the positive aspect of being a tech entrepreneur in Angola is you have you have much less competition compared to to these more mature markets. Uh, so there's a lot of white space. There's there's tons of of opportunity uh, to to test and and uh, and and uh, you can actually you can get very far. Uh, in bootstrapping mode, so self-finance and, and get to a certain point where there, where that will be uh, much more difficult in a more mature market where you already have uh, big players uh, dominating, and then without supporting uh, uh, investment from early on, it becomes very very difficult to to compete with them. So, uh, so the potential in, in in Angola is is is, is great. And I do believe that uh, investors are going to start investing increasingly in Angola. Um, and a bit, big reason for that is, as well is, well, the opportunities, but also just that it's become that much easier to invest in Angola. As I mentioned before, uh, when we received our initial investment in 2015, uh, it was a headache. It, it, they, we couldn't receive the investment in Angola. Um, just uh, just for the investors to come and, and, and visit and, 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 and see how things were in Angola, it was too complicated to get a, a tourist visa back then. Uh, it was a process that would take weeks, if not months. Uh, and ultimately, our first meeting uh, that was supposed to have taken place in Rwanda, we, we went to, to Cape Town uh, because uh, they didn't have time to wait for the visas to come through. Uh, and again, this has improved. Uh, and, and, and now a lot of countries don't even need visas to come into Angola. Uh, and the ones that do need a visa, well, they can get it uh, instantly uh, through a, a digital application. So it's, it's, it has improved. And I, I'm certainly optimistic that we are positioned to receive uh, a lot of investments uh, in, in the coming years. Uh, there's a there's a positive uh, momentum uh, in Angola. Yes, there have been uh, definitely uh, small to to relevant to relevant improvements. Uh, I I really must agree. Uh, the, the the visa thing, which is quite recent uh, right now, so I, I think it came into force like uh, I don't know three to four months ago. Um, tops. And uh, and and actually, uh, a lot of countries, uh, uh, you just come by, you know, you get here, you present your passport, and they stamp your passport, and you get in, and uh, that's wonderful, wonderful for tourism, wonderful for creating new businesses uh, opportunities, um, and uh, and I think uh, Angola is, is is set to be on the spotlight of uh, of the I wouldn't say I, I wouldn't say the world, but at least uh, in in this region. We have the Lubito Corridor, 
we have, uh, you know, the, the two countries or the two presidents of uh, the United States and uh, Angola met uh, quite recently, and we'll have uh, we will witness some some key developments in the in the next uh, years. I hope. Uh, so, uh, Kenneth, uh, just uh, tell me, could could you share with us? Could you share with us a, a pivotal or a, a pivotal moment from your uh, entrepreneurial journey um, and kind of offer your perspective on the on the trends or the key trends that you anticipate um, in the tech and in the tech yeah landscape in, in in Angola or right now you you also working in Mozambique or, or the region as a as a whole so key trends that you anticipate that will influence positively or negatively the tech and entrepreneurial landscape. I don't know, AI, uh, just yesterday, uh, someone posted on, on X, on Twitter, on Reddit. So I saw it first on X, but it was posted initially on, uh, on Reddit. So a guy just recreated using you know, stable diffusion and know your customer you know, process you no, know, he created a picture based on a an, an ID card of a person. He created a person doing the, you know, taking the picture with with a, a paper, writing something, and it look everything looked so 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 real, you know. So uh, companies, financial institutions, <laughs> will have to rethink how these things will get done because uh, it seems to me that. Um, fooling these systems you know and uh scamming is thriving uh impersonation is thriving um how do you what do you anticipate for 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 the next uh for the next years ai cyber security uh personal personal data privacy laws um what do you anticipate for for these markets man we're living uh interesting times um i mean overall again I'm, I'm 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 optimistic so we're talking about ai uh there's obvious challenges but but i i prefer to to look at uh at all the opportunities uh as well so if 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 we dig down uh, to our business for example uh, one of our big challenges is exactly that to to uh, avoid scams. So that is people are publishing cars or, or real estate to figure out uh, they are who they say they are. Um, and, and currently we're doing it uh, if it's a new user that we, we it's a heavy manual process uh, where we uh, require them to, to send a, a photo of their ID and hold it up to their face um if it's not a registered company if it's an individual um and that's just uh, it's 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 very heavy labor-wise to spend time on this but it's just necessary of course ai now allows us very way various ways to to scale that but of course on the same token uh the scammers also then finds way to to navigate through that uh, using using ai um but yeah it's it's still very very early days in in in, in terms of of AI and, and um, but 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 we can obviously see the opportunities and the, and the challenges ahead. Um, I'm just a sort of a glass half full as opposed to half empty kind of guy. Um, we've always been worried about okay the robots are coming they're taking our jobs. And and now we start to sort of have the same conversation regard, regarding uh, AI. Um, I think sometimes we we underestimate uh, our race, our human race. I, I do think that we're going to come out on top. Um, but it's 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 important that we have the legal framework, um, the laws in place to sort of structure that, and it, it will be challenging. Uh, and and definitely the the African continent. Uh, is is currently not uh on the forefront of that so it it, it is going to be very very interesting uh to uh to navigate it but but i i very much see great great opportunities and and, and we see 
uh, various ways where we can uh, implement this into our existing uh, business model. And uh, again, an outlook on, on a digital inclusion, it, it, it just, uh, I'm very optimistic as well that we, uh, we don't leave the informal market behind. Uh, I think that we will find a way to bridge the informal with the formal market, bringing the informal players uh, and, and, and start gradually to bring a digital elements of their business in, into the current uh, business uh, revenue stream. Um, so it's, uh, it's, it's very, very uh, complex and interesting work ahead. Uh, but uh, yeah, we're, we're really, truly living in, in, in interesting times. Uh, Definitely. But again, I, I want to congratulate you, you guys for, for this podcast because we're highlighting the potential of Angola in English. And many times it's not spoken about English and we are discussing these real issues uh, and opportunities in Africa and the digital ecosystem. And those are just very important uh, conversations to be had. Thank you. Well, thank you, Kenneth. Um, I, I I salute you for being uh, such uh, an optimistic uh, an optimistic person. Otherwise, it wouldn't be otherwise possible because you're <laughs> you're, you're doing entrepreneur entrepreneurship uh, uh, in a very uh, well doing entrepreneurship in every single part of the world is is challenging by itself, um, um, and each country has its own uh, particular. Uh, challenges, but also uh, his particular, you know, uh, opportunities. Like you said before, uh, okay, uh, maybe Angola is not a, a the place to be in Africa when we talk about global capital. But in in the other hand, you you could face there's such huge opportunities, untapped opportunities, and you face less uh, competition. So um, in some areas, at least. So there's definitely things to things to be done. Um, I was, and you talked about the informal sector. There's, there's another untapped uh, source of, of uh, you know, uh, G, I think G, GDP growth. I came across, uh, I don't have it right now, but hopefully we'll get it to, to sharing the, in the pod on the comments, uh, uh, a study that um, it studied like uh, some informal businesses. And when you turn the informal business uh, to a formal business, the success rate of those businesses were higher than first time, you know, founders going right away in formal because they had the opportunity to, to learn, you know, before. So they were, were in the informal. Right. So the rate of success, if, if they, they existed in an informal business for, for a long period of time, the probability of that company or that entity uh, once formal to succeed was higher than the average. So I think there's there's a lot of untapped uh, potential, um, um, and and the future, uh, as you say, I think the future is bright for the continent. The future is bright for Angola, uh, and we have to take uh, uh, advantage of the human capital dividend, um, which is quite important, I think. Uh, and technology will help us. Uh, so it will bring some challenges, but definitely it will help us. I wouldn't say leapfrog. <laughs> but uh, some things you cannot leapfrog. I think we talked to, about this in other forums. You cannot leapfrog infra lack of infrastructure. You know, you, you cannot leapfrog the absence of roads or dams but can, or. But you can bridges. leapfrog. You can you can leapfrog some education gaps that uh, Kenneth was mentioning, uh, and using probably um, the AI what? as a mentor. And helping this, probably we can we can leap not leapfrog, but uh, overcome in a more in an easier way these challenges. That, yeah, yeah, Andre, I agree. But that, that's another thing, uh, you know, uh, giving easier access to uh, education is not necessarily leapfrogging the need for uh, people getting educated on the necessary skills. You know, I mean, there's no substitute for hard work. It's it's you got to do it. It's you gotta the, do it. Yes. there's simply no Definitely. other way. That's my point of view. Um, but, um, thank you. Thank you, Kenneth. Uh, I don't know, Andre. Um, I think we, we address all the topics that we wanted to address. Um, you're a wonderful guest. 
hopefully we'll invite you uh, uh, more times here to discuss other other things. I th you have other projects in your pocket, uh, I, I know. Uh, um, so hopefully uh, in the near future, you'll be with us again. Um, and uh, thank you so much for all the insights and knowledge that you shared. I think it's important to share this once again in this platform in English. That's why one of the reasons why we created this is to bring interesting guests um, with interesting things to say um, and mainly in English. I think we'll have guests speaking in other, uh, speak in other languages, uh, probably Portuguese, but maybe, Andrea, like you said, maybe with AI, we just record in English and then we just, uh, you know, translate everything uh, with our own Indeed. voices to Hindi, to Portuguese, right. to Spanish, and with our own there tones you of You already have that. That, yeah. that already exists. Um, and maybe we'll, we'll choose like a couple of episodes and do some experiences with that. So it's possible. It's possible. Um, so we're closing gaps. Andre. We're leapfrogging. Oh. We're leapfrogging. We're leapfrogging and we're closing uh, gaps. Uh, once again, <laughs> Kenneth, uh, thank you so much. Good luck for Tech Africa. And uh, it's been wonderful to talk to you. We've been talking for a, a couple of months now. Um, I hope that your insights uh, come again to the to the podcast because it's uh, it's been really enriching for me to, and I think for us to to talk to you. Thank you so much and good luck again. Such a pleasure. Thank you, guys. Okay, thank you so Cheers. much. So, for all the listeners and viewers, don't forget to subscribe to all podcasts and our YouTube channel. Please pay a visit to to our website where you can get the most recent information about Africa Tech Talks. And have a nice day. Thank you. Thank you.